Hello friends, Max from Maxon Training Team here. Today, I'd like to introduce you to Red Giant newest color tool, the Parametric Curve. You may have or have not used a curve tool before to tweak your image, and you may or may not like the feel of it. But trust me, Curve is one of the many versatile and powerful tools that we can use to modify our image tonal value across shadows, midtones, and highlights. Curve Tools gives us the precise control over how different levels of brightness are mapped, creating a complex adjustment to the image overall look, from subtle correction to dramatic effects. Curve is an essential tool for anyone looking for precise controls over the look and feel of an image. So while we are at the topic, let's spend a little time to understand the general attributes of our Curve Tool. The way a Curve Tool works is pretty simple. It operates on a graph where it appears as a straight line from left to right. The horizontal axis, or the x-axis, represents the original input tonal values of the image, from black on the left to the white on the right. The vertical axis, or the y-axis, represents the adjusted output values after applying the curve. So by default, the curve is a straight diagonal line from bottom left to top right. This straight line represents a one-to-one -one relationship between input and output values, meaning that there is no change to the image. The image output remains the same as the image input. And when we create a sample point and adjusting this line at that sample point, it creates a curve that alters how input values are mapped to the output values, thus changing the brightness of the sample tonal range in the image. So for example, when we are adjusting the lower third of the curve by using this sample point number 2 and lift the sample point up, the shadow in our image will be lifted and we will get an overall brighter image. However, the brightest part of our image, the highlight, will remain unchanged. And if we see our curve graph, we will be drawing an upright curve that looks like a bump on the lower third of our curve graph. There are some few key attributes that are very common on any curve tools available out there in the market. In any curve tool, you can add control points along the curve, allowing you to manipulate specific tonal regions of your image independently, like the example that we just did before. Pulling the curve up will increase the brightness for those tones, while pulling them down will darken the area of the sample points. Using a curve, you can brighten your image by lifting the entire curve up, turning the output values to be higher than the input values, and thus brightening the overall image. Meanwhile, by adding multiple control points, you can precisely shape your image to adjust specific area without affecting the others, like deepening the shadows without affecting the midtones, or brightening only the very bright highlights on the image without lifting the rich and dark shadows. Another common use of a curve tool is to create an S-curve, where the shadows are slightly darkened and the highlights are slightly brightened. This adjustment enhances contrast of our image by increasing the distance between our shadows and highlights and thus making dark areas darker and bright areas brighter. And last but not least, using curve, you can also target the color channels of your image individually. And doing so, you can balance color in your image or even add a split toning effects. For example, pulling down the blue curve in the highlights will introduce the opposite color. In this case, we will be introducing yellow which will make the image warmer. While simultaneously pushing up the blue curve in the shadows will introduce the cooler blue tint in the darker areas, creating a split toning effects that add depth to your image. Curve tool is not new. It exists in many image manipulation software like After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, Photoshop since the very early versions. Rightfully so because it is a very intuitive tool for artists to do some simple color corrections like darkening the shadow and brighten up the highlights or adding or reducing contrast through the use of S-Curve. But sometimes when you want to do something a little bit more complex, you start to experience all sort of intricacies. Sometimes the lowest and the highest value are easily got clipped as you move the curve. 
The other time when you want to control just a very specific part of the image through the use of control points, but as you move certain control points, the other point moves as well. Or if you want a certain value to be really accurate, you think that you can simply type in the numbers, but then you found out that there are no numerical fields for entering those values. These are some of the frustrating things that makes us lose confidence on our curve tool. Now enter the parametric curve, a precision curve tool that gives you access to tons of adjustable parameters that you can use as the variables to control your curve adjustment. There are two ways of interacting with parametric curve. You can use parametric curve on the effect control panel with the new updated curve UI, or if you want to, you can simply activate the show overlay checkbox and fully interact with the floating overlay. The floating overlay is very flexible. You can adjust it to your own preferences. So if you want to, you can change the scale or adjust its opacity or reorganize it to the best locations on your screen. By default, Parametric Curve presents you with three control points which you can use to control the black level, the midpoint, and the white level of your image. You can also add control points, up to five control points to be exact, if you need more positions for your adjustment. You can also deactivate them if you need less. For instance, when creating super smooth S-curve that will affect the entire image. By the way, these control points are Bayesian, so they are much more controllable and each one of them have their full set of parameters that you can control and animate. And for you, the advanced users that needs all the flexibility, you can definitely link all these parameters to the expressions to drive all these parameters. It is fully customizable to accommodate your needs. The position X and Y sets the locations of your points along the given axis. Dragging the value in X will move the control points left and right, while dragging the value in Y will move the selected control point up and down. What's interesting with parametric curve is that none of these control points are limited by the graph. So you can remap these control points to the value that you really want to, even when it is lying outside the graph. Also, if you look closely, parametric curve has these dotted lines that goes below the black points at the bottom left and beyond white at the top right. It means that using parametric curve, you can also target the sub blacks and super bright tone that lies beyond your diffuse white values in the image. Parametric curve can definitely be used to target and remap HDR values when you are working with a high dynamic range images and displays. And using the angle, you can rotate the tangent line and set the exact angle of your point's tangent line. A zero or 180 degree value will yield a perfectly vertical tangent line. And to change the distance between the control point and its endpoint, you can use the tangent A or B. The length of this tangent line will also affect the smoothness of the curve that you created. All right, now that we have a firm understanding about parametric curve, let's see parametric curve in action. And similar to the example we've seen previously, we can use parametric curve for many things in color grading, like adding a split toning effect that will create a color depth and separation to our image. So now let's apply parametric curve to the blue channel of our image by using the drop down menu. And let's also activate control points number two and four while disabling control point number three. We can increase yellow on the highlights by dragging the control point number four slightly down while simultaneously introducing blue tint on our shadows by dragging the control point two up. And I can also refine the control points one and five to smoothen my curve. And to spice up this adjustment, I'd like to add another parametric curve for the red channel and again activate control points number two and four while disabling control point number three. And I will drag the control point four up to add red on the highlights and drag the control point number two down to reduce red in the shadows and simultaneously adding cyan. Next, to complete this, I'll duplicate the curve and reset it. This time, I'll apply the curve only on the green channel. And now I will carefully play with the tangent line of point one and five just slightly 
to introduce green tint on my shadows and my highlights. With the Bezier splines, you can easily adjust how smooth your curve can be, and you can do so while staring at the big floating overlay to see the fine changes you are making to the curve. So, no more squinting at the tiny UI. And when done right, the sum of our adjustment will give us this famous teal and orange split toning to our image. Apart from creating a split toning effect, since Parametric Curve offers precise controls over tonal adjustment, you can use Parametric Curve to surgically shape a specific tonality of your image. For example, we can refine shadow details. We are aware that human vision is very sensitive to the details in the darker area of the image compared to the brighter counterpart. Changes in the shadows area in our image plays much more important role compared to the changes in the highlights of our image. By carefully shaping the shadows using the control points available in the lower part of the curve, you can now enhance textures and depth in your image while maintaining an overall balance. When you want your black point to be slightly lifted without affecting the mid-gray, you can use the control point number 2 as the anchor point for your mid-gray and you can then drive the control point 1 up. You can also drag it outside the graph if you want to achieve a smoother curve. And by disabling the control point preview, you can now see how rough or how smooth the curve that you've created. So those are some general examples of how you would use Parametric Curve while grading. But the power of Parametric Curve doesn't stop there, and there are a lot more that you can do with it. Here, we have a Rec. 709 image which was captured using Red Weapon Monstro 8K camera. The sensor of this camera is very capable of capturing over 17 stops of dynamic range. But since this image is a Rec. 709 image, this image has gone through several processes of image processing to fit its wide dynamic range into the small color space that our display is capable of displaying. One of the process in the image processing pipeline that our image has gone through is the tone mapping, which compresses the wide range of luminance values captured by the sensor into a much narrower range that can be displayed on standard screens while retaining the image details and perceived realism. The high dynamic range image captured by the modern cameras typically have a luminance range far exceeding what most display devices can handle. And tone mapping adjusts the tones in the image so that both the brightest highlights and the darkest shadows can be represented effectively within the limited dynamic range of the output device. The process of tone mapping often generates something that resembles an S-curve. Roughly drawn with parametric curve, it may look something like this. Of course, this is just a generalization and the exact curve depends on the tone mapping algorithm that was used and the characteristic of the image itself. In parametric curve, there is this apply inverse curve function that will give you the perfect inversions of the curve that you've created. So I can duplicate my original S-curve and set it to its perfect inversion. I will move the S-curve inversion to be at the top of the effect stack and the original S-curve below it. This setup means that I am tricking the effects of my image tone mapping by applying the inverse curve and then reapply the S-curve at the end. So when I disable and enable both of the curves, they should do absolutely nothing to my image. And now, if we add some color correction between this sandwich of parametric curves, you'll see some amazing effects. Let's say we want to warm up this image by either using a gain or highlights wheel, a very typical operation in grading when you want to add a warm golden hour look. Without the parametric curve sandwiching this effect, we'll get something like this. It is okay, but I don't love it. And as we switch both of the parametric curves on, we'll see a very much different result. That is simply because we are applying our effects without being affected by the tone mapping of our image. This technique is also very great when you are adding an effects that affect the luminosity of your image, such as glow, or adding light effects like shine. So there you go, Parametric Curve, a curve tool that offers you tons of parameters to create a controllable Bezier curve. If you love creating effects with Curve, give Parametric Curve a try. 
I'm sure the parametric curve is going to be your ultimate best friend.